Come on, let's praise him. Oh, I feel praise in this house today. Come on, somebody really praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost already. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, God's been good. God's been good to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Williams, for preaching the Word of God. Amen. And let me know. I haven't completely missed the boat. Amen. I think I'm, I got a or, at least one oar in the water. Appreciate the good Word of the Lord. Amen. And the phenomenal preaching of the Word of God by my father, Pastor Steve Buxton. You won't find a greater preacher in the entire world. I mean that. I mean that. That is good, good, good preaching. I appreciate it. So thankful for the honor and privilege to be here and love the elders, love Pueblo, and uh, I love all of the people out here. We've hunted, fished, had fun, got stuck, all kind of neat things, and uh, we sledded down the sides of overpasses and had a ball. I'm glad to be here today, amen, and appreciate all of the niceties, the room, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, the brother was picking us up, and I said, brother, thank you for picking us up, and He's like, oh, no, it's a blessing. He said, I get to pick up Brother Booker's and Bishop Wilson's. And he began to go down this line. I said, well, hey, I'm, I'm sorry your day has nosedived. <laughs> amen. And I was being facetious with him. But, amen, what an honor it is. That's how I feel being here. A very, very distinct honor and privilege. But I will say this much. I feel right at home. I said, I feel right at home. Amen. And uh, I haven't sweated and fasted and prayed and killed myself for this conference to get up here and just go through the motions. I'm not good enough to go through the motions. I, I got a sweat and snot in the middle of it somewhere and God's going to move. How many's going to help me today? Amen. And believe that God's going to distinctly touch your life, touch our churches. Won't you throw your hands up in the air and say, God, I want you to do whatever you need to do in me. Come on, help me pray, Jesus, right now. Prepare our hearts. God, there's a deep move of the Holy Ghost in here. I want you to take us where you said you was going to take us. I know what you told me, but God, now I need you to tell them. There's a place of glory. There's a place, God, in the shadow of the wings of the Almighty today where, God, we would visit and we would feel and we would taste and we would touch. Oh, God, take us there today. Take us there today. Jesus' name. Zechariah chapter 11. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 1 through 17. 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 6 to 11. Give honor to um, our home church in Carson City, Nevada. Man, God is blessing. And in Fallon, Nevada, 50 miles east there, God has planted another work. We just got our sign up on the Highway 50 this last week. I salute the great ministry team that is there. In fact, Brother Sergeant, wave your hand. Amen. God sent them over a year, just a year ago to assist my wife and I. I give honor to this great man of God. Glad they're with us today. Couldn't be doing what we're doing today without them. Zechariah chapter 11, beginning in verse 1. Open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour thy cedars. Howl, fir trees, for the cedar is fallen. Because the mighty are spoiled, howl, O ye oaks of Bashan. For the forest of the vintage is come down. There is a voice of the howling of the shepherds, for their glory is spoiled. A voice of the roaring of the young lions, for the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Verse 4, thus saith the Lord my God, feed the flock of the slaughter whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich and their own shepherds. I want you to pay attention to, to, to the shepherds references here. Pity them not, for I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. But lo, I will deliver the men, every one into his neighbor's hand, and into the hand of his king, and they shall smite the land. And out of their hand I will not deliver them. I will feed the flock of slaughter. Even you, O poor, the flock. And I took unto me two staves, one called beauty, the other called 
bands. And I fed the flock. Let me just go ahead and say this. Stave or a staff is plural of stave. Everybody say that. Plural of stave. A staff. Somebody say a staff. This is plural of staves here, okay? So we read here. He said, I took staves. One called beauty. The other bands I fed the flock. Three shepherds I cut off in one month. My soul loathed them. And their soul also abhorred me. Then said I, I will not feed you. That dieth, let it die. That that dieth, pardon me, let it die. And that, that is every to be cut off. Let it be cut off and let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. And I took my staff, even beauty, and I cut it asunder. That I might break my covenant which I had made with all the people. And it was broken in that day. And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. I believe in anointed leadership. I believe it's symbolic. And it's a carrying, a man office of the word of God. Verse 12. And I said unto them, if ye think good, give me my price. And if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. There it is, brother. Thank you. That's my ore right there. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter. A goodly price that I was praised out of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Then I cut asunder my other staff, even beauty, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. Verse 15. Stay with me here. The Lord said unto me, Take Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that be cut off. Neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that is broken, nor feed that stand. I don't want this kind of pastor. Stand and steal, but he shall eat the flesh of the flat and tear their claws in pieces. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right hand. His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. Turning to 1 Kings, notice the implication of the right arm and the right eye. Denoting the authority of that leader. 1 Kings 8. I want to get this, some of this reading out of the way so we just preach and let God move. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 6. And the priest brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Brother Randy Williams, I'm telling you, that ark, I'm so tempted to grab it. In fact, I haven't made up my mind if I'm going to get it or not, but um, I'm tempted. I have bouts of my brotherhood. That come upon me. I may go get it here in a little bit. Chapter 8 verse 6. And they brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Unto his place. Into the oracle of the house. To the most holy place. Even under the wings of the cherubims. For those cherubims spread forth. Their two wings over the place of the ark. And the cherubims covered the ark. And the staves thereof above. And they drew out the staves. Or the staff. That the ends of the staves were seen out in the holy place before the oracle. And they were not seen without. And there they are even to this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone. Which Moses put there at Horeb. Which the Lord made a covenant with us, the children of Israel. When they came out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass when the priest, when the ministry all filled the Holy Ghost came out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so the priest could not stand to minister because of the glory cloud for the glory someone said the glory of the Lord had filled the house lift your hands Lord you're here today God I know what you've spoken to my heart God with complete assurance God even with a cocky crazy attitude of faith God I know that you're fixing to do something God that we need I pray God for every preacher and his wife 
Oh, I pray right now, pick up a weary shepherd, Lord. Put a staff of glory. God, I pray for our wives and children. Oh, Jesus, I pray let the glory fall right now. Let it fall in this house in the name of Jesus. If you believe what I'm praying, I want you to clap your hands and give God some praise. We need the glory to fall. Come on, the glory's already here. God have mercy. Yalamaha. Come on, there's fixing to be healing. There's fixing to be signs and what why? Because the glory's in the house. I preach to you today, and I am gonna preach till I get done. I said it. I'm gonna preach till I get done. Can you still bring the glory? I want you to look at your name and say, can you still? I don't want to hear about what you did. I, I want to, can you still bring the glory? You may be seated. I have never in my young life had such a burden for ministry and families, but also for the churches and the most precious people of God. That if you study through the word, you will understand that his people were always and always will be God's glory. A man in our church had a dream, and he, he called me. He said, Pastor, I need to tell you this dream. He's a backslider. Just prayed through. And uh, his name is Brother Butler, and he said, Pastor, he said, I, I'm so appreciative that I, I was able to pray through him. He said, I feel liberty, and I feel that, that there's been some grace, Brother Williams, that's been applied to my life. He said, but Pastor, he said, in this dream, he said, I saw that giant hulking mass uh, of, of my problems and failures and, and addictions and, and, and memories of dreams gone bad. And he said he was sitting there on the edge of a bed as it were and he had casts upon his legs. He said, but pastor, his eyes, he said, they had hell fire that was emitting through them. He said, I looked in those eyes and saw all of my misery and all of my failure. And he said, I stood there transfixed by fear. And he said, that, that demon or whatever it was, with the worst voice that, 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 that brought fear, he said, that demon told Brother Butler, he said, I'm going to crush you with these legs. They're in a cast. He said, Pastor, that devil told me that when his legs heals, he's going to stomp me in to oblivion. I'm preaching to people in this house that are fixing to quit and are on the verge of nervous breakdowns, depressed and oppressed. I've come to talk to somebody in this house. It's time to rise up and bring the glory back home to where it belongs. There's never been a time that I've ever seen where our churches are afflicted and our preachers are oppressed in this day day and age uh, that we live in. Uh, I've come to serve hell notice. Uh, Bubba, I ain't going to let you get up uh, and I'm going to be the one uh, that's going to do the stomping. Uh, I've come to preach uh, to an apostolic church. Can we still bring the glory? Ooh, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I feel hell has convinced some that we need to just be thankful for what we got. Accept your circumstance. From a worshiping church, we become the worried, wrinkled, chosen, frozen. I've come to tell somebody we cannot afford to have one dead service. Our churches cannot afford. My three boys cannot afford for my ministry to be broken down by the desertion of glory that my father and forefathers have given me. I've come to tell somebody I'm not tired. I'm not depressed. I'm not discouraged. I'm encouraged that if God before me, who can stand. God have mercy. I don't need a pill. I don't need a couch. I don't need to get my back adjusted. I need to get my heart adjusted and bring the glory home. You may be seated. 
Many can sell the glory, but few carry it. <laughs> Apostolic praise breaks gates of hell and the oppressive force that it represents. Oh, I miss the days when ministry worshiped. Can I preach what God has given me? Oh, I miss the days, not just when they preached and had a nice suit on and wanted us to worship, but oh, I miss the days when men of God were laid across altars and my God, and laid across platforms. We weren't worried about who was next. We was worried about, I hope this day doesn't end because the glory cloud has, oh, I'm telling somebody today, I don't care how good you are. All I care about is how good God been to me I can't preach my way out of a wet paper bag but this boy is going to do his best to bring the glory back home my favorite preachers are worshipers my favorite heroes are the ones that worshiped the glory down for me a preacher that cries and doesn't just do his hand. A preacher that prays, not just for a thought, but that I, some broken reject, could walk into an altar and feel the glory of God. Can you still maybe seated? Stave and staff in the Hebrew, Badim, same word. Staff again being plural of stave. Staff or stave literally means a part or rather an extension of a leader's body. Staff in hand. It is a shepherd's staff. In a figurative tense, it would be the staff of bread, indispensable by reason that it supports life. A staff biblically always signifies power. Because it's supporting. It supports a hand and an arm. But ultimately it supports the body of the man that carries it. Therefore I would say today that a staff takes on signification. Or it's significant rather to the part it immediately supports. That is the hand or the arm. By both of which in the word is signified the power of truth. The last time that the men of God brought the ark. They didn't pull the staves out and throw them away. But it says to this day they're still there. I've come to preach to somebody. The reason why God left a staff for a shepherd. A couple staves uh, still there by the ark uh, is that in 2011 uh, he's still interested uh, in men uh, that can transport, uh, that can carry uh, that can uh, shoulder the load uh, and bring uh, the glory uh, the glory of God uh, is not stationary uh, it was not meant to be stored uh, but it was meant uh, to be taken to Vietnam, uh, Honduras uh, Philippines, uh, but let me bring it home, uh, it's for Pueblo uh, it's for Junction City City. It's for Nevada. It's for all kindred, every tongue. Come on, young preacher. Will your shoulder fit the staff that carries the glory? Come on, man of God. When's the last time you felt the glory? I know it was a Wednesday night. There was more missing that was there, but my God, a man of God walked to the pulpit and brought the glory. It was two or three, but then Jesus showed up and God showed out and the glory of God thundered in a little church. Can we steal? The staves shall not be taken, Exodus 25. Mark 6 and 8. Take nothing for your journey, boys, but take that staff. <laughs> I don't need you to have anything, preacher man. I just need you to be able to carry and direct my glory. First Samuel 17, Goliath screamed at David before it was cool thing. Am I a dog? Thou comest at me with a stave? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. 
Oh, 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 yeah, I do. Why? Because I'm holding the God of Israel. I'm holding that which supports, directs, but it also brings. And so you come against me with all your men, but I come against you in the name of, oh, there's glory in the name. There's power in the name. There's healing in the name. All power is given to that name. You may be seated. Philistine cursed David. I tell you, the giant in your life despises the glory because it always transcends their headship. You know why God's or the devil's trying to drive a wedge between you and your shepherd? Because he's scared of what that shepherd's got in his hand. It's a, it's a way to bring broken homes back. My God, I feel like preaching in this house. Amen. You know why the devil wants you to stay at home? You know why the devil wants you to not build a church and not start a daughter work and not dream? It's because if you get your hands on Aaron's rod, friend, I'm going to tell you, there's going to be some blossoms. There's going to be some growth. There's Can you still bring the glory? Bring your heavy armor of organized gobbledygook. Go, go, go read a book and, uh, with some, some king somewhere. And you probably need to do all this to have revival. Oh, I'm telling you. You come too late to tell me I can't have revival. We can have revival when it's snowing, when it's blowing, and when it ain't going, honey. I've come to tell somebody, all I want's the glory. All I want's the glory. I don't care how I got to carry it. I don't care what I look like carrying it. But this boy, this preacher, is going to bring some glory. Nevada needs it. You need it. My wife needs it. My kids got to have Oh, can you bring, can you bring the glory? I ain't ashamed of this thing, y'all. Uh-huh. See, some of us want to worship, but we're too dignified. That's why the glory don't show up, honey. You're meddling. No, I'm not. Take me to a service. Amen in a rented hall. But where preachers are bucking and snorting, saying, my God, there ain't but a couple hundred people, but I feel so. What is that? It's the glory of God that's in my soul. I've come to tell somebody, give me the glory, not a story. Give me the glory, not some watered down message. Bring the glory. Bring the glory. Come on, I feel glory trying to fall. I feel glory trying to fall. Hey, hey, the devil's defeated. The devil's defeated. He's under my feet. I'm going forward. Let me preach. So the Spirit took me and brought me, Ezekiel, into the inner court. Honey, God don't share his glory with outer court apostolics. <laughs> you may claim it, but honey, it ain't claimed you yet. I'm telling you, there was something about that man of God. He said, I worshiped a man. The spirit took me and the glory of God filled the house. Once a year, 364 days, he trembled and shook of the day that he could feel the glory that some of us despise and wipe our feet on. It's just a message giver. It's just a good thought bringer. Amen. It's just so you can get through another midweek and go fishing. Oh, my God. I'm preaching here today. Once a year, he would go into that place after he looking into the waters of repentance and saw the image of a fallen man. 
and there he went in uh, into that place. Uh, he ate. Uh, he saw the light of God's glory. Uh, but something happened uh, when he said, uh, greater is he. Uh, greater is he. Uh, I will bless. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, something began to shake. Uh, you ain't preaching with me. Uh, the house began to tremble. Uh, and coming down, uh, descending from heaven, uh, was a glory cloud. Uh, and he was taken uh, through the veil of doubt. Uh, through the veil of flesh. Uh, through the veil of unbelief, uh, through the veil uh, of an evil report, uh, and he was in the place of glory. Oh, you come to church, you think you're getting a goosebump, honey? That's the glory of the ages. That's the glory of God. They worship, and the glory fell. I, I'm not no ancient. Hebrew scholar and all that cool stuff. I leave that to the big dogs. Us chihuahuas, we just do the do. And yo quieto for Jesus. And we get her done, baby. That's right. I'd rather be a chihuahua out in the hood than a big dog on a porch. Come on, brother Seth. We may not have the biggest churches, but we got the biggest God, Bubba. And no, I'm not trying to say we ain't grow because I baptized a boy on Sunday. He come up talking and he was a brother. God's bringing black back because black's where it's at. You know why? Because there's some soul that's here. Just give me glory. Preacher, preach. Just give me some glory. Got tired of the white folks want to go like this. He wants somebody to go like this. Go ahead. Your home can stay the same. Go ahead. You don't have to have revival. I'm going to. Oh, yeah, why? The glory. The glory. Did you know if they didn't worship the high priest? This was the big D-A-W-G, son. If he didn't worship, they drug him out. You know why? Friend, when you have one chance a year to have your sins rolled away, you don't want no so two-bit preacher up there. You ain't preaching with me. You walk in this house addicted to drugs, hooked on crack. Hey, man, your family don't want you. You're living in the gutter. Don't give me some little foosy, hot-stepping little preacher. Give me an old red face, gravelly voice, man of God that can bring the glory to where I'm living. I'm telling somebody, God's bringing the glory to where you're sitting. God's bringing the glory to where you're laying. I've come to tell somebody, pick up your bed and walk. Pick up your bed and walk. You may be seated. I don't know whether to pray for you or tie a rope around your ankle. I got a winch. I'll pull your hide out. My wife can run it because she's pulled mine out a couple times. Thank you, Brother Williams, for doing the young preacher language because I was feeling you. I understand all that crazy stuff. I think. No, I don't. By faith, I walk. All throughout church history, we find emotional, emotional, I don't believe you have to get emotional. You don't believe in the glory. Daddy, can I preach one of your favorite stories? Hey, man, that you use evangelizing and have permission? Thank you. He's shaking his head. Hey, Amen. I'm going to be disobedient, but he's going to thank me for it. Hallelujah. I'm not being disobedient. I'll be obedient. If he knew what I was going to tell, he'd tell me, preacher. If I took you over that light socket, he probably preaches here in the old church. <laughs> and brother, unemotional. Man, that's a long drop, but we're uh, short people. <laughs> and and uh, I went ahead and cut that wire right there. 
I got the green wire out and I peeled it aside, stripped it back. Got an inch. I got the black wire and I got the white, the common wire. Got that out and I said, now, now, now brother and sister, I want you to go ahead and hold on to that. And you go ahead and hook a brother up on what's happening. Oh, that's powerful. Oh, brother, but ooh, glory. I, I am connected to the source, brother. <laughs> I seen some of y'all hop off of ladders, cut flips, and ow, that thing's hot. Let me tell you, what am I trying to make you shout? I don't know, but you ought to be. But when I come in contact with the glory, I can't, amen, go through some philosophical discourse of how. No, I say, ow, some gonna. It's like fire. I said it's like fire. Ah, shut up in my bones. It's changing. It's rearranging. It's transforming. It's performing. It's the glory of God. Because you don't know, like I know, what the glory's done for me. He picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. Sit down. You don't want the glory. Sit down. You don't want to praise. Sit down. Go ahead, sit. I will bless the Lord at all time. His praise. His praise. Not my story. Not my mess. But his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Am I in an apostolic church? Brother, can you still bring it? See? Sit down. That's what I got to keep preaching. Sit down. I think I can. Where is the Lord God, Elijah? I don't know how to live on faith, but I watch my shepherd. So here goes. My God, I'm walking on water, Brother Spell. My God, my bills just got paid. Some of y'all think I'm just preaching. No, a man God's put gas in my car when I had no money. God's put food in my fridge, and it ain't even funny. God's helped me. God's trained me. God's rearranged me. But all in all, I've learned it comes from glory. Not a book, not a school, not a conference, but on my knees, there's glory. It's going to Yeah! It's going to What are you waiting on? The glory. Enter to his gates, Thanksgiving. On your way to church, your shadow can heal. If you're going to talk to where the glory comes from. I've come to tell somebody, silver and gold have I none. Is a testimony of a blessed home missions pastor. But let me tell you, such as I have. I'm trying to preach it into you today. I don't have schooling. I don't have what this world says I need. We don't have disco lights and fog machines. But baby doll, and bless your little stinking heart, the glory still falls at 220 West Winnie Why? Because I only want the glory. I don't want smoke unless it's Shekinah. I don't want fog unless it's a cloud of covering. Ain't no rock gonna 
take my place. You've regulated God to a rock? I can't praise him because I got a rock in my sock. No, you got rocks in your brain, son. When I come into God's house, the Bible says to cast all my rocks upon the Lord. He said, cast your cares. I've come to tell somebody, my glory is bigger than a bad day. My glory, it's bigger than the drywall machine. My glory is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ever ask. Oh, thank you. The glory. Oh, sweet Jesus. Preacher, you don't understand. You ain't bothering me at all. I, I've had some things cut down. So did King Nebi. Jesus cut his little storehouse down. But he said, put a band of iron around it. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I've had some things cut down in my life, burned, taken. Uh-huh. I've come to tell somebody. King Nebi had to learn that the heavens ruled supreme. And there ain't no glory like Holy Ghost glory. And once you get that verse down, you can start saying, ain't no party, brother. Like a Holy Ghost party. Because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. So yes, I can tell you why you're going through what you're going through. You want me to tell you? You need to figure out who's in charge. Big, large, and in charge. His name ain't March, but he's big, he's large. He's bigger than the universe. Amen, but he encapsulated himself in the virgin womb of a little maiden called Mary. So the glory on a Bethlehem Eve could be shown unto all men. I've come to tell somebody, don't tell God how big your storm is, but you ought to tell your storm how big your glory is. I feel like a praise break. I feel like a praise break. Anybody ever seen those old water barrels with iron bands around them? They have them in Nevada. They store the water in it. Here's the beauty. Brother Booker, I knew you were going to be proud of me for saying this because this is intelligent right here. I'm telling you. Uh, I was writing this down. I was like, ooh, son, that is bad. As the water saturates a vessel that is leaky all by itself, (laughs) there's a thing that happens called swelling by reason of the contents. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) Oh, God. I'm having a hard time just getting this out. It's so good. (laughs) There's some things in my life by reason of internal pressure and outward constriction called the arms of glory. Nail scarred. But let me tell you, I come to church, I drink it in to win, and with God's help, I will hold the load, baby, and bring the glory. I don't know about you. I'm tired of wimps and whiners. I'm tired of criers. I'm tired of those that believe more in the devil than they believe in the God of glory. This treasure in earth and vessels, this treasure in earth and vessel. I've come to tell somebody, it's time to realize I can bring it. You tired of being a broken sister? Then you ought to let God constrict you a little bit and pressurize you internally. This joy I have, world didn't give it to me. I thought he was going through hell. He was. I thought he had a bad day. Yep, but the glory popped him. I thought the devil killed him. No, I'm still standing. I'm still standing. But by the grace of God, I'm still.
I can't finish. Because David had a revelation of glory. Oh, they're going to stone me, Pastor. So? I'm telling you. Pastor has taught me that people have more reasons why not to than they have to do. I know y'all don't have them in your church. Pastor, I would do miracles, signs, and wonders. But I'm telling you, my toe is hurting so bad. In fact, I won't be there tonight, nor my wife. And then the next day, text me because they got a blessing 300 miles from their house. Didn't have gas to get to church. Can we still bring the glory? I'll get up to go fishing at four. I won't get up to bend my knee and bring it. I'm preaching today what I feel in my heart. I'm telling you, we can shout and have fun and have nice homes and cars and the ministry ought to. But the day that we set the glory down is the day that the apostolic church, as we know it from Acts 2 onward, ceases to exist. Oh, can you bring the glory? Don't bring me your sob story, but bring the glory. Don't preach how many you lost. Preach to me how many in your city still need it. Don't tell me what the devil's doing. Tell me what God's going to do. We need the glory. Preachers, broken homes. I'm pretty, this is the world we live. David got his sons and his daughters back. We need the glory. Broken homes, standing ankle deep in burned out dreams, bring hither the glory. Let me just see that priestly garment. Amen. That I know if it's walking before me. Amen. And with the voice of Judah, we shall, I'm telling somebody, the word of God would speak to you. Pursue for thou shalt surely recover all. Today, what you're going to get in this altar, I'm telling you this in the Holy Ghost, what you're going to get in this altar ain't because of this preacher. It's because God desires for somebody to shoulder the weight of end time glory. God's looking. God's waiting on somebody. You may not have a name but you got the name because no other name under heaven given among men whereby I must there's no name like the name of Jesus I gotta hurry I'm, I gotta get finished he's the God of what's left pastor you don't know what I lost no because I can still see what you got Well, Pastor, it's just a little cup of oatmeal and some cooking oil. The preacher says, Whoa! There's about to be a lifelong, amen, blessing upon this house because I'm not the God of what you've left. Your husband's gone. Where you at, Mama Elder? I've come to tell you, your glory days are still on you. Your glory days. I know Papa's gone, but Mama, I know you can bring it. I know if I get in a bad shape, if I get in a bad situation, I'm going to call you Mama. Why? Because I know your hand fits the step. Glory. Destiny comes from what's left in the dust. Because when creational breath, the pneuma of Acts 2, is breathed into what's left, Adam set up and said, This is this, and this is this. And this is this. I've come to tell somebody, your vision's fixing to be open. When you wake up on the banks of failure, a man breathing some H2O that the angels wish they could breathe. It's called the glory. It's called the Holy Ghost. Can we bring the glory when more is missing than what we started with? Can we bring the glory when half the churches? Can we bring the glory when there's no money? Gideon, what do you have left? Oh, God, I got all, we're going to have revival. No, you're not. Sit down. I only got 300. 
Pastor Doc started doing a shout. <laughs> Woo! 300, did, did, you, did you say 300 get in? Yeah, God, I did. Oh, my Lord. Jesus got all in a fit. He got all t- just turned inside out. You know why? Because from what was left. Amen. There was a little man of God that baked a little cake. And that little cake was transformed. Thank you, Brother Zach Wells. I'm going to give a shout out to my buddy. That little cake of sacrifice, that was all that was left. It rolled through the enemy's camp and brought the glory. So you go ahead and tell Dr. Laura your story. I'm going to go talk to Jesus and bring the glory. You go ahead and call your gossip group. I'm going to get a hold of the horns of an altar and bring, I said bring the glory. My first in closing, I'm entitled to three because good things happen in three or bad. It fit though, I'm using it. You know what doctors work with? What's left. I've never seen anybody going to the ER room. Oh, doctor. I lost my leg out there in the cornfield or whatever. I'm, we're in corn fed country, so there ought to be cornfields. Oh, this is the east side? We're up in the hood. <laughs> Homies' hydraulics went out and pinched him off. Is that all right? I was just checking with my Ebonics uh, director. <laughs> they don't go in there saying, can you go back out there and get my leg? No. Can you save me? <laughs> Doctor, <laughs> it's bad, ain't it? Oh, it's bad. What's left, son? There ain't a whole lot left. Doctor, can you do anything? I think I can I've come to tell somebody the great physicians in this house. Is there anything left in an apostolic preacher and his wife? Oh, Katayama. Is there anything left in an apostolic that life has wounded and life has taken? I've come to preach to somebody. God works best with what's left. He's the God of the leftovers. He's a God of failure. He's acquainted with grief. He knows my time. He knows. He's the God. What's left? Insurance companies work with what's left. Let me tell you, there ain't no better insurance policy than Calvary's blood, friend. Oh, even the devil can't touch the blood. I'm telling somebody here today, you can call AAA. I'm a hook up JESUS on the royal telephone and call them up and tell them how, what, a, what you need, boy. Just a little bit. I don't need a whole lot. I need just to break me off some, Jesus. Give me a hook up. Give me a little bit of glory. In God's company, there's no total losses. God said, mm, I think I can work with that. Can you still bring the glory? The auto body shop works with what's left. My God, that looks like a waffle, dude. What'd you do? And we all claim our wife was driving. Ooh, I felt my wife's lasers activate. I'll, I'll answer for that here shortly. Can, can you fix this? We come dragging into church, wheels all, all bent up. Ooh, this is funny, but the airbags in life have blown up all over the pastor. Ha. He don't know I had a flat tire today. He preached about faith. That's fine. Preach faith, pastor. Because if you don't preach faith, I ain't going to eat tonight. So you better bring the glory. I've got people that come in like this in my church. Their front end's out and their rear end. Thank you very much. Out of alignment, that is. In closing today, we cannot bring the glory 
going down God's highway all jacked can't even track we're broke we're busted we're disgusted we toe up from the floor up and we think God's going to use us to bring the glory honey Jesus don't roll on jalopies Jesus don't roll you ain't preaching with me Jesus don't roll on flat cushions and flat tires called apostolic doubters I've come to tell somebody God's the ultimate body man he can take you he can make you he can recreate you He's the restoration station. He's a frame saver. He'll get you down the road. Lick it, he split. He'll make you walk right. He'll make you talk right. He'll give you good gas money. Oh, can you bring? I need Brother Elder. I need Mama Elder. I need all the elders. Not you dignified preachers. I'm talking about the elders. I need you to come join me. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Oh, you better quit that, brother. Ah. Come on up here. I need you to come. I have felt such a burden. Hey, man, by no means. Hey, man, would I ever try to play upon the situation and extract sympathy. Hey, man, for the point of a message. But I have never felt a burden for... The bishop of this conference. Hey man and sister, elder, elder, and girls. And I remember when I was dragging my trailer back from Massachusetts, I stopped in Hutch to yeah, get here in chair. And old Brother Carl Elder, he met me there, Brother Tony Spell, and he man, I just had the big old truck and trailer, didn't know what I was doing. And, Flew halfway across the country and drove it home. And we went to eat because the Bible says to taste and see, and we was being obedient. And I remember he walked outside, and I, I'll never forget this. He run his hands down that trailer, and I was kind of like, what are you doing? He looked at my truck, and he asked me all these questions, and tears rolled up in them big old eyes that would get all red. And he said, son, I'm proud that young men are still willing to do what you're doing. I'm telling you, God took me back there in prayer. I will, I'm telling you, I felt like God pressed me through the carpet of my office. And I said, oh, God, can I still bring the glory? Oh, Jesus, can I take the mantle of an old elder? He didn't preach all the conferences, but let me tell you, when he prayed, mountains moved. When he lifted a hand, that ikoso to Yamaha, I'm telling you, angels, a man responded. I'm preaching tonight, this afternoon. We don't need a restoration. We've become an apostolic cover-up. We live in a mask era of a world. We need the glory. Brother Elder, I love you. And I believe God's given me word for you and your family. We can't lose faith over what we've lost because we would be captivated by what was never God's anyways. I'm not talking about your daddy. I'm talking about in your church now. In your minute. Quit playing. Hey Amen. I, I, I'm not counseling. And I'm just telling you what's in my heart. God gave me to every preacher that's in this house. We got to quit playing to the vacuum. Sucking life out of us, our marriage, our churches. Uh, the voice of the vacuum. Old Reverend Hoover. Uh, some sanctified sucker called the devil. He's always a liar. He always will be. But the day that a liar's voice will replace the voice that boomed with authority. Into nothingness a void that was a vacuumous place. And said, let there be. It was the voice of glory that brought much, thank you, Pastor, from what was never there. It was the voice of glory that we understand by faith the world was framed. We understand that faith is a substance of things hoped for, evidence of things. I've come to tell somebody here today. The Abrahamic covenant was a covenant of the leftovers because Lot was separated. We've got to bring the glory, but we've also got to let some things be cut out of our lives so God God can speak. You study the book. When a lot left, God spoke. Some of us need to get rid of some things that are messing up the glory. Samson's victory. Give me, give me that deal. Samson's victory was from death's leftovers. And he drank water out of it after he got done whooping people with it. 
You tell me God ain't the God of leftovers. Oh, if we're going to bring all the glory, Mom, it's going to be the old glory. God put this in my heart. And a man in your church, Brother Elder, he made this for me. It says, can you bring the glory? 10-6, 2011. Bishop Paul M. Elder. If we're going to bring the glory, this will support you. But you can turn it like this and carry some things that your church and your family are going to need. Give me old-fashioned prayer. Give me old-time fasting and separation. For without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Give me worship that's not to the beat of a drum or to a catchy tune. But take me back to the old paths. Put my foot on the cornerstone of glory and say, Amen, I'll take the old paths and the old glory instead of a new road that has a story. I've come to tell somebody it wasn't what Job lost, but it was all about what he kept when he was losing it all. I've come to preach to you. God's going to bless you a hundredfold. God's going to give it to you, but we've got to make some room. We have a responsibility. I'm almost done. I'm a preacher. No, you don't understand. You are a preacher. Every service to bring the glory. Oh, we can't take ministry, please, here. I submit myself to every elder in this house, every man of God. But let me tell you what God told me. This is the highest calling still in this world. Right here. Can you still bring the glory? It takes priests and shepherds with firm footing to get the people the glory to Canaan. I don't want some stumbling just there for the money preacher that's not connected to the authority of the shepherd. You see that crook right there? My neck's been in it many times. It's my man of God and my pastor drug me out of hell's fire. I'm telling you, oh, can we bring the glory? The man of God raised his hand. They were trained to believe that God would speak. We better be careful what we do and say, preachers. The glory was not for self. It was not to promote a selfish agenda. The ambitions of man. Too many today so carelessly handle this precious glory. We live in a time, and I love missions. I fly out on Saturday to Honduras. But if we're gone more from home than we're there, we'll never bring the glory. Our field of labor is where the glory's coming from. Go home and bring the glory, Pastor, preacher. There's families, there's broken homes, there's abused children in your city. Can I say it this way? And I love missions, but it's our obsession for missions so we don't have to face the loss of the home front. Can you still bring the glory? People are dying. There's a backslider right now. The needle hanging out of his arm saying, I, I wonder if Brother Elder's still preaching what he used to Whatever I can go to that old ugly church, but I'm telling you, there's something in there that I haven't found anywhere else. Don't tell me our world wants another charismatic church. They want the glory. Don't tell me they want some other stool sitting. Egypt educated preacher. No, they want the glory of an old man of God that won't waver. And when his foot had well nice slip, he brought the glory still. Brother Carl Elder is dead today. He's gone on to see his reward. Great men of God are they're leaving me and you, heroes, warriors. But God's come today to ask every one of us in here, can you still bring this glory? Moses didn't bring glory. He brought self. And he was cursed to never inhabit what he'd always preached. Can you still bring the glory? And it's frustration 
with that little piece of drywall. Whack, he smacked the rock. And because of that, glory died in the wilderness. Can you still bring the glory? Some of the most impatient, volatile, unforgiving, easily offended grudge bearers are now found on platforms. Can I preach from a burden today? I'm done. We're not owed anything. We don't deserve anything. But oh, we can carry the glory. We can preach good messages and sing and boast and claim. But can we bring the glory? Canaan land is there. But the people aren't. Because God has intended for us to take them there. Our churches are a reflection of us. It's time for us as the high priest to invest our money. <laughs> and to invest ours. I haven't given if my church gave it. The church gave it. Oh, Lord, help me today. Until I surpass Calvary, I've given nothing. Israel sang the song, Spring Up a Well. It says the princess dug the well. The nobles of the people digged it. By the direction of the lawgiver with their staves. Oh, I, I can't do that because that's going to support my ministry. I, I know we like to do miracles with it and shake it, shake it at conferences and direct with it. But can you dig with it? Oh, I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost in there. Are you willing to break it so the glory can come? Oh, I ain't digging with this. this. This is my money. You don't know what I, I'm come to tell somebody here today. Are you willing to give and sacrifice? Because if we're not, royal blood does not flow in our veins. But those that have royal blood are those that dug with the stave. They dug with their anointing. They dug with their gift. They were willing. These were men of age. The ground was rocky, elder. It was full of holes. And if they gave somebody, a man that support, that authority, they might fall themselves. But yet, the elder said, here, son, you have a go. <laughs> they had valid reasons not to dig. They may break their own support. Then where would they be? But God took them from a spring up a well to a place called Matana, which means sacrificial offering, to Nehiel, meaning strength of the mighty, from then to Bamoth, which meant elevation. Then Israel, the whole nation, Took a whole nation for the glory of God. Do we even want the glory anymore? I ask sincerely. I'm not being called. I'm telling you God spoke this into my heart. And I have to deliver every bit of it. Or do we even want it? I'll preach to me. Do I want just a big building so everybody can say Joel Buxton's doing a good job? Did I start a daughter work just to be the, 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 the cool thing, the end thing? Or do I want the glory? Am I just preaching so people will put my name on a CD and say, hey, my God, God forbid, get it out of me, oh God. But oh, Jesus, let me carry it, oh God. I know I'm not much. I'm short. I don't have a whole lot to give you, but God, I promise you these shoulders to carry it. I dig with it, God, till my my fingers bleed until it breaks. I'll give my last time. Why? Because I must breathe the glory. Nathan's brook dried up and ours will too. Moses felt like an alien. Ezekiel, a slave. Elijah was a fleeing man. Joseph was in a pit. Job lost all. Peter in a Philippian jail. Don't die in your dilemma, preacher. In our theology, there better be some room for, surreal for reality that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. So, elder, I believe that when the man of God holds this up, Israel prevails. Moses' hands were heavy, and I felt a burden to come strengthen you, you great man of God, the bishop. Didn't think it was going to be on you this early, I know. And I know you'd never wish it upon you. I've come to tell you today, there's a rock called the chief cornerstone that God is going to let you sit on. 
and Aaron and her, his staff stay in his hands. Till the going down of the sun, the glory fell. If your pastor's in this house, I want you to go stand by him. Brother Elder, God told me to tell you it's your turn. I'm t- he told me to tell you. And through you, the glory is going to come for this neck of the woods. Oh, I feel it all over again. <laughs> You're now the bishop. See this? You're the bishop. Don't ever stop bringing the glory. Three weeks ago on a Saturday night, all you writers, forgive me, but God spoke to me. I was shaving with the elder. God gave me a poem for you. And the old man in this poem was your daddy. And this poem, I, I'm not just saying this. I don't write poetry. Good, I'm glad you do. I was shaving. I, I mean, it wasn't very spiritual. God spoke to me. Boom. And this, thank you, Brother Randy Williams, for making this dream come true in the man. What's his name? Tim Gray. Where are you at, brother? Come here, Bubba. Let me shake your hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. God's at you helping me preach today. Where can I find a staff? He said, I got somebody can make one. Elder, today, God told me to give that to you. We're dedicating this to you, Bishop. It's a stave. It's a support. It's an extension of God's right hand of authority. It's a type of the word. It's the skeletal structure that supports, directs, and yea, carries the glory. I read to you what God gave me. I wrote it in one sitting. Stood at the base of this great hill, knowing the odds of besting it were greater still. I've been on this road for a while now. And it's blessings wait that I could never anticipate had me stumbling and wondering how. Times pass forward by faith. To scale such was nothing great. But today the cost to climb was simply not worth my time. Days of old was glory untold. But days ahead I'd wish unread. Subtle sigh to friends I'd deny. I whispered still, I wish I didn't have to climb this old rocky hill. Comfort and ease, I do believe, rather than the strife of sacrifice is for me. On and on I pinned my story, wishing and forgetting the days of glory. The tears and fears of a faith-filled life now in arrears. I strove to forget life and peace as I only wanted to quit. I wanted my own and was too tired to give. This weight of glory was tiresome and hey, I just want to live. Happy to be free, I turned to leave. Those glory days lost in the breeze. There I spotted a traveler from whom I hoped would be my reprieve. There gnarled and tested, his faith never bested. He pointed to his staff upon which he rested. Stug wells, rescued sheep, defended homes, carried the burden, and kept me going strong. Tested and tries, his was a story. I dared to belong. Nothing new, my son, the old pastor, my story. Captivated, I listened to this old man as he vividly told me how he had brought the glory. Pointing on as if passing the baton to your future son, this road you're upon, he urged me yet on. Leaning heavily upon his staff, the wary eye and gravely voice he spoke, I'm protecting the past. Walk on and be strong for not too long and coming fast.
to you, my son, you will also pass this down. An honor bestowed, but sadly some that carry will never know. Hold it dear, close to heart, but use with abandon for it's the best way to start. God directed and held in our hands. This responsibility reveals the character of the man. He bowed his head and fell off for what I knew held him fast. I knew it at once, a shepherd's staff. With a startled hand, I caught this man. Into my life, he thrust with his last. The weathered but true shepherd's staff. Feeble voice and fading strength. He gathered himself and spoke with a fire. Somewhere deep within rekindled desire. Son, sometimes won but oft lost. Yours this duty to bring cannot be tossed. You must dig, fight, stay up the night. Pay a great price. Support the flock. But one thing you cannot, he screamed, while telling me his story has ever failed to bring this precious glory. It's not yours to keep, but to give and give over this promise you must meet. Be careful your hand, thundered this man. The day you smite the rock, you curse the flock. Be careful your hand, young man, for if riches and comforts you seek, yours is never Canaan's land. The road you walk is stained in blood, filled with sweat and tears of pioneers that refuse to quit again and again rising from its mud. Your talent and greed was not something they would ever need. Their eyes on the prize, they brought this glory from their knees. Son, what they reverence and fears, these days has all but disappeared. These newfangled stories aren't the same. Those looking for riches, fame, or a name. Shallow and lacking power. Feebly writing stories. They strive to erase those elders that once brought the glory. To each his own, some strive in vain, forfeiting all as an homage to a jealous father Cain. As his voice rang in my ears, holding him, I stared through my tears. I held the hope of my future and stability of victories past. In my hands now was a shepherd's staff. Whether to lift a sheep from a cliff too steep, or dig a well to sustain those dehydrated by the onslaught of hell. To carry the ark, I must this journey embark. With that said, I stepped out upward onward, onward to begin my journey story of bringing glory. Let's lift our hands all over this house. Oh, can you still bring it? Can you still bring the glory? The Holy Ghost would ask today, can you still bring it? Come on, we ought to pray in this house. The seraphims never flapped their wings one time. The ark of God rolled on the shoulders of men. It's time to bring the glory. Less of me and more of you is what I need. Show me your glory. Show me your power. Less. Come on, bring the glory. Bring the glory. Bring it. <laughs> is what I need. I need your glory. I want your glory. Less of me and more of you is what I need. Show me your glory. Show me your power. Come on, bring the glory. Yes, in me and more of you is what I need. 
Come on, we got to have the glory. So many times I've tried my way, but all of the pain go away. I feel glory. I realize I feel that glory. I Come on, you. come on, it's revival time. Give me it's this coming to you. It's coming to your church. So it's coming true. to your home. The glory so is still falls. I've tried my way All of the pain Hey, 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 hey That's it, come on Come on, Bishop Just keep bringing the glory That's it, church Come on, Bishop We don't care where you say go Just bring the glory We don't care how long you pray Just bring it I want you, Lord of me and more of you glory is glory glory and I beheld his glory in the temple show me your glory ah. show ah. me your power we don't need another meeting we need the glory yes. that's it precious saints of God Hallelujah, bring the glory. Bring it. He inhabits the praises. His glory comes where two or three gather together and bring the glory. There you go. Come on. How long's it been sitting red hot tears ran down your face? How long's it been, preacher, since you laid on the floor and left the mess, but you brought the glory? Glory, glory, glory. glory. Yes, I feel the pressure of angels' wings in this house. I feel the glory of the heavenlies. Come on, it's here and now. Me 
want everybody to listen to me, please. There's an elder that needs to be up here. Grandma? I know you're all right. But everybody needs to know where they're going. 